class, in this module, we're going to talk about a few different abiotic disorders you might notice with your fruit, including puppy fruit, dry fruit, and split fruit. All three are fairly common in the New Orleans area and statewide. Starting with puppy fruit, mostly this is a problem with young satsuma trees. Typically, the trees will outgrow it, so we're talking about trees from one to five years old. And this is a really good illustration of a puppy fruit. So this is a normal satsuma, and this is the puppy fruit. You can see it's much larger. When you squeeze it, it's kind of squishy. That's why it's called puppy fruit. Um, puppy fruit on older trees are usually the result of fruit set on late blossoms. So if we get a cold spell after the main blossom crop has come through, and then the tree decides to bloom a little bit again, oftentimes those blossoms will set a puppy fruit. So that's an interesting little fact. Little can be done to prevent this. Again, it's mostly weather related and the young satsuma trees seem to be the ones that always do it. However, you can also see it on sweet oranges, limes, and lemons. Uh, time, good growing conditions, and proper care reduce the occurrence of puppy fruit, but again, there's nothing you can really do to fuss with them or get them to stop producing puppy fruit. It's not a nutritional problem caused by lack of fertilizer, so it's not a problem you can fertilize your way out of. Um, but these puppy fruit are kind of interesting. They are still edible. They're not harmful to the tree, and they're not as frequently occurring on the older trees as they are with the younger trees. Next, we're going to talk about dry fruit. Here's a really good picture of what that can look like. There's nothing worse than peeling an orange or a satsuma that you grew yourself, and you're going to take a bite and then it's so dry and juiceless and inedible. You know, what happened? Well, dry fruit can be one cause of this. Up to a certain point, the longer the citrus is left on the trees, the more likely they are to dry out like this. Um, they ripen sweeter, but leaving the fruit on there too long will cause the fruit to overmature, and that's the dryness that we want to avoid. So make sure you pick the fruit as it ripens, if you're trying to expose the fruit to some cold weather, just pick one from time to time to make sure you're not getting them overripe and leaving them on too long. Rootstock, so that citrus trifoliate orange, the rootstock, um, that can actually cause dry fruit where the citrus trees are being grown on an overly vigorous rootstock that hasn't been controlled or pruned back adequately. So it's robbing nutrients, robbing moisture from the developing fruit. That can cause our dry fruit as well. Young trees sometimes produce dry fruit. This is something when folks are getting their first crop of oranges or satsumas, and it might be a young tree with less than a dozen fruits on it. Uh, they're often disappointed when they eat those fruits. They go, what happened? These are terrible. Well, some immature trees will produce dry fruit during their first few years of production. That's nothing to worry about. They will outgrow it with time and adequate fertilization. Some varieties, such as navel oranges and tangerines, might not produce juicy, sweet fruit that we want to eat for up to the first three to five years after they've been planted. So just be prepared for that, especially if you're establishing a new orchard in your house. As the tree matures, the fruit will become juicier. Weather stress can also cause dry fruit. Um, this is especially true as that fruit is forming in the late summer and early fall. Unseasonably warm or unseasonably cold weather can really kind of cause this issue to occur. When the orange tree is still in fruit, uh, when the tree is under stress from weather conditions, the fruit will suffer. So it's something where the tree is trying to survive, it's dedicating all its energy to just getting through the season, so it's not putting as much effort and as many resources into that developing fruit. Warm fall temperatures, um, often associated with dry citrus fruit, if we get a long, warm, dry fall, um, often like we do in, in August and September, sometimes in October, that can cause this as well. Citrus need cooling temperatures to begin that final stage of ripening for their fruit. So if we don't get that, and it's say in the 90s, well into November, December, we might have some dry fruit issues. If summer temperatures last, um, it will delay that. And they become overly mature inside without showing signs of ripening on the outside. So, you don't get that nice coloration, but the inside fruit is you know, right where it should be. You can often leave them on the tree too long. Frost damage can also make the fruits appear to be dehydrated and the fruit to be dry pulp um, following that cold exposure. So if we get, uh, a couple years ago, we got a frost over the Thanksgiving holiday, that could be a factor with dry fruit formation as well. Within a few hours, 
arms on the cross, the fruit juices um, start to rupture outside of where they're being held because of the ice crystals forming inside. So that'll actually dry the fruit out, even though the fruit's not rotting. Um, it's not something you would really enjoy if you were to eat. Improper irrigation can also cause dry fruit, a lack of water um, in general. So that's something we do encourage our homeowners to do is have a plan for irrigating their trees properly. And again, getting the water just to the root zone and not splashing on the trunk of the trees or the canopy of the trees. Have a plan for when we hit those dry months in the fall and early winter. Citrus trees need deep water. Water that saturates the soil is three feet down. So this takes time and it takes quite a bit of water. Um, it can be a little cost prohibitive in urban areas, but it's worth it if you want to save your crop. You want it regularly, but infrequently. So it's better to water deeply once a week than to water a little bit every day, seven days out of the week. You want that water to get down into the root zone, stay in the root zone, and not just be in that top few inches of the soil surface. That's not doing you much good at all. Mature trees, um, trees over three years old, it's a good practice to do it every 14 days. Keep an eye on the weather forecast. If we get a few inches of rain, we can hold off or back off on the irrigation. To avoid overwatering, allow that top inch of soil to become dry before you water it again. Too much nitrogen can also cause dry fruit. Um, this is because the nitrogen will encourage rapid growth of the foliage, right? Nitrogen promotes leaf growth and development at the expense of the fruit. So if you fertilize too late in the season when the tree's already full of developing fruits, it can actually set your tree back and produce a crop of dry fruits. So you don't want to do that. Make sure you're timing your fertilizer correctly. Typically we do a, a kind of light strength fertilizing um, in June in our area. Don't do it much later than that because that can actually cause dry fruit and harm your crop. This is a very common problem that we get calls about every fall split fruit. In hot, dry weather, this fruit peel will become tough and it'll actually become less elastic. The fruit begins to swell from the inside and it actually splits the peel at its weakest point. And it's almost as if these fruits have exploded open. This is caused by a few different things. Inconsistent watering is the biggest factor. Allows the tree, if you allow the tree to get really dry, so if we have a drought spell and you're not irrigating properly and deeply enough, when the tree does get water, the inside swell and it causes that split. This is probably the most common call we get from our home growers. It happens every year, it's like clockwork. When a citrus tree has deficiencies in potassium or calcium, the rind can be thinner and weaker, so it's actually going to be more prone to the splitting as well. It's always a good idea to soil test each year to see where you're at in terms of those levels and make corrections as needed in the springtime. So how do we prevent this? Because nobody wants to eat that, it's ugly, and they do start to rot and attract a lot of insects to your yard. It's a huge issue in our area. What do we do? Consistent watering, not allowing the tree to get too dry, deep watering to a depth of three feet regularly, that's a good idea. And again, with mature trees, every two weeks, you want to have this watering depth to three feet. Um, we don't want to overwater because that can cause disease problems. But it's a good thing to put your hose kind of on a trickle in that root zone and leave it on for several hours so that that water gets down into the root zone. That's a good practice. Regular fertilization and making sure that the tree is provided with all the right nutrients that it requires that's key because again, that shortage of potassium and calcium can cause a thinner rind and more splitting on the tree. Soil testing and a leaf test will help you determine if you need to add either one of those things. Make sure you post all your questions to that discussion board, especially if you've experienced any of these problems, split fruit, dry fruit, anything like that. We want to know about it.